Now that we have learned the block shapes, you may be wondering, how do we do math in Scratch? And we're going to go over that today. All right, let's go into the green tab, which is for operators. And we're going to go over uh, pretty much each of these round operators. And we're going to go over the math of them. All right, so pretty simple for these first four blocks. Uh, we can drag those out here. Um, obviously, you can type in these two sections. And you can type in there. You can just type in whatever number you want, so 1, and you can press the tab key on your keyboard if you want to go to the next one, or you can move your mouse and click on that as well. So 1 plus 1, if I double click on it, it says 2. Woohoo, that's math. Okay, what about 1, tab, minus 1, 0. 1 times 1. This star is times. Be careful for that because in traditional math we have the x for times and the line with the two dots over it for divided by. But in programming and in Scratch, thank you Scratch for you know being the same as programming. Uh, we have the asterisk, which is a star for multiplication, and the backslash, or is that forward slash, uh, for division. Uh, so one times one is obviously one. One times anything is going to be itself. How about two times two to show that it works? Four, great. And then how about 12 divided by 3? That should give us 4. The cool thing about these four blocks is that if you get it, if you put it in, a, like say you're trying to say it, so we did this in the hello world, now our cat will say, say this number that is reported, so it says 2. Um, say we, you've got this really complicated script and you're like, ugh, it's supposed to be minus, not plus. You can just right click or shift click. Remember that some browsers don't like uh, that right click. I don't know why. Maybe maybe it's tablets, but yeah. So you can just right click on the plus sign and then switch the sign of the block. So you can switch it to negative times or divided by, which is really cool. We also have this nice block here, which basically gives us a random number. I'm just double clicking on it a bunch and you can see I got four five, six, so it's a random number between one and 10. You can also do negative numbers as well. So negative 10 and 10, cool. Can say that just to show you that how it works. So he says negative three for two seconds, negative two, negative four, negative two, five, three, it's random. That's a cool block for getting into uh, maybe making things more random in the world that you're creating. All right. Also with math, we also have these three blocks down here. Pretty much all their math blocks are reporter blocks. So this is the modulus block. And uh, if you don't know what that means, uh, if you've taken algebra, I will. I'll explain it. If you didn't take algebra, you can just skip over this exact block and you know, kind of fast forward to the next ones. So this is modulus, which is basically similar to the divided by. So say we've got a weird number like 13 divided by three, and that gives us this really long number, 4.33333. Well, if we do 13 mod three, then that gives us one. It's the remainder, right? So three, three times, so you got three, then you've got six, then you've got nine, then you've got 12, and then you have remainder one. So it goes into 12, but then it's got one left over because 13 minus 12 is one. So it basically gives you the remainder. So if I did 14, then it's gonna be remainder two. And if I did 15, we know three times five is 15. So it's gonna be remainder zero because it goes into it perfectly. So you can use this to find numbers that go into numbers perfectly. So for example, if you want to find all the even numbers, you can do mod two. If it's zero, then it's going to be even. If it's one, then it's going to be odd. So 15 is odd. We type in a really long number, but then add a zero to the end, we know it's going to be even. So it's zero, so that's even number. So it can be very helpful in certain cases. So yeah, that's how mod works. All right, on to round. Rounding a number is very helpful. So for example, if you've got like 12.2 and you click it and you round it, it rounds down to 12. If you do 12.8, round it, it's going to round up to 13. So it basically takes off that decimal and rounds it up, rounds it up or down to the nearest number. 12.5, it's going to also round it up. So 0 to 4 will round it down. 5 to 9 will round it up. Cool. 
Uh, then we've got this block down here, which is for more complicated math. It's got a drop down, and we can see there's a lot of options in here. Absolute value basically gets the absolute value of the number. You can do negative 9 will also give you a positive number. So it just removes the minus sign. We've got all of these options in here. Uh, I'm not going to go over all of them, but if you have taken uh, trigonometry, then you've got sine, cosine, tangent, arc, sine, arc, cosine, and arc tangent. If you've taken like algebra or above, you probably learned about the natural log or the log. We also have e to the power of something and 10 to the power of something, which will be helpful, especially 10 to the power of something for scientific notation. Uh, I'm going to go over floor and ceiling because I feel like that is helpful. So just like we have round, which is 12.5 gives us 13, floor, if we do the same thing, 12.5, it's going to round it, but what it's going to do is always just chop off the decimal. So it's always going to round down no matter what, even if it's 12.9. It's basically just getting the floor value of that. So if this is 12 and this is 13, it's always going to go down to the bottom, the floor. Uh, it's going to give you what's called an integer, which is a number without a decimal. Ceiling, on the other hand, will take you up to the next level. So if you've if you got a number between 12 and 13, it's always going to go up to the ceiling, which is 13 in this case. So 12.9 will give us 13, even 12.1 will give us 13. All of these can be helpful. It's kind of just getting specific with your rounding. The ceiling and floor were not in Scratch 1.4, just FYI. We also have square root, which should be pretty explanatory. It just takes the square root of a number. If you don't know what that is, then you might not need it. But once you get into higher level math, then you'll understand. All right, that's pretty much all of the math blocks found in the operators section. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.